Carefully, we remove the rearing frame and check for acceptance. Bees crowding thickly around the cells is a first positive sign of good acceptance. Bees are carefully brushed aside with a goose wing. Accepted cells can be distinguished by their lighter colouring and their greater length. Queen cups which have not been accepted are short and their opening has been narrowed. First, the two rearing frames are placed into a carrying box. Later, the started cells can be transferred into the care of a queen-ripe finisher colony. Lengthy delays should be avoided during transportation. Two more rearing frames with fresh grafts are inserted into the gaps between frames. Because many young bees are emerging in the starter colony, we can use the stock for six to eight batches at intervals of 24 hours. More batches are possible, but only if we constantly add more frames of sealed brood. Before queen cells are given to the finisher colony, they are checked once more. Each larva should swim in a generous supply of royal jelly. The task of finishing cells is done by any very strong and thriving colony. In order to make sure the larvae are supplied with the royal jelly which suits their age, the finisher colonies should have many nurse bees available in the supers. In order to lure the young bees into the supers, we remove at least three frames from the center of each super some hours beforehand. It is best if we leave frames with pollen and honey in place in order not to lose the impulse of nursing. But we remove empty honeycombs to create the necessary gaps. If all frames contain much honey, as can be seen in this case, even honeyed frames can be taken. During the following manipulations, we must make sure the queen cannot slip into the super. We select at least two frames with large patches of open brood. Here, many young bees are occupied in nursing the young larvae. The frames now are raised into the super together with all adhering bees, and we leave a gap of one frame between them. The gap created in the brood chamber is first filled with frames of empty comb before we replace the queen excluder and the super. We now transfer the cell rearing frame with the started cells into the gap between the brood. No finisher colony should receive more than 15 to 20 started cells, otherwise brood care will suffer. They remain in the finisher colony until shortly before emerging.
queen cells in the finisher are sealed on the fifth day after grafting. They have to be caged before emerging. This can be done on the fifth or eleventh day after grafting, because then the cells are relatively robust so that they can be handled. If we miss the two dates and one virgin is allowed to emerge, the whole batch of cells will be destroyed by the firstborn. Before caging, the nursery cages must be prepared. Waxen or plastic cups are filled with honey. Access to food is vitally important for the emerging queens, as they may well starve. The cups are fastened with honey into the base of the cages. This standard cage is secured by a movable plastic cover on one side and by gauze on the other. The cages are placed facing opposite sides alternately into a nursery frame. This arrangement is best where many queens are allowed to emerge in a colony. Many beekeepers have replaced the wooden cages with hair curler cages of 18 to 20 millimeter diameter. The cages are supplied with a reserve of honey by twisting the closed end of the cage in finely crystallized honey. The hair curlers are held in holes drilled into wooden blocks. But let us go back to the standard cages. With a gentle twist, we remove each cell holder from the cell bar and insert it into the cage. Shaking and rapid movement must be avoided at all costs during this operation. Furthermore, it is important to keep the cells upright at all times. The completed nursery frame with the cages is carefully set aside. Of course, when using hair curler cages, they are treated in the same manner. When virgin queens are allowed to emerge in the colony, the nursery frame is returned to the same place where the cell rearing frame had been. Because sealed cells only need 50 to 70 percent air humidity and temperatures of 35 degrees Celsius, they can easily be transferred into an incubator for their last phase of development. Besides, in such an incubator, all work of checking emergence involves very little effort. The young queen bites through the tip of the cell and emerges 12 days after grafting. Lower temperatures may cause a delay in emergence, while raised temperatures can cause early emergence. A large thorax is a sign of good conditions during the queen's growth and development. From the time of emergence onward, the incubator should be checked at least twice a day. Conversely, on emergence in the colony, a daily check is sufficient. 
The cells should be removed after the young queens have left them because sometimes a virgin will re-enter her own cell after emergence and is not able to leave it again. Marking queens is best done with numbered plastic discs available from the appliance trade. For individual markings, they can be bought in various shapes and in annually changing colours. For applying the marking, the queen is held gently between thumb and index finger, with the thorax being uppermost. Using a pinhead, we apply a small amount of glue to the centre of the thorax making sure none is in contact with the roots of the wings. After moistening the other end of the marking tool, we pick up the plastic disc and place it over the glue on the thorax. Next, we let the queen run free over our hand, examining her carefully to see that she has well-developed legs and wings. Once marked for life, she can easily be found in a strong colony and her age can be recognized by the color. Finally, we put her back into her cage until we require her again. No later than two days after emergence, we should introduce the young queens to the bees of the little nuclei from which they are allowed to mate. The bees needed for forming the mating nuclei are obtained by dissolving the nursing colony. They can also be collected from other strong stocks by shaking a few brood frames. Here the nursing colony is dissolved. At first we remove the nursery frame with great care and brush all bees off with a goose wing. The frame is put aside for the time being. One cage with a young queen is removed and attached to a piece of wire. The cage is hung into the special hive body which is used to hold the shook swarm. All bees of each frame are brushed into a funnel over the swarm collecting box. If the queens are to be sent to an approved mating station, we must have no drones among the worker bees as they could adversely affect the desired mating results. A drone excluder holds back the drones while all the young bees run into the darkness of the swarm box. Once inside, they gather around the caged queen and form a cluster. The last bees still clinging to the sides of the hive are also brushed into the funnel. During these manipulations, many of the old workers fly away to their old hive stand and the population of the shook swarm 